Americans are capable of achieving extraordinary things when they have the freedom and opportunity to do so. This is American Potential, and here's your host, Jeff Crank. Well, thanks for joining us on another episode of American Potential. Appreciate you joining us. You know, one of the things that we've seen rise over the last several years are utility rates. And, you know, it's kind of a basic need that everybody in our country and our world has the need to heat your home, to cool your home, to use electricity, to have water and wastewater. But what happens when a basic need like that starts to cost more and more? In the state of Colorado, the cost of utilities has gone up over the past 10 years due to a lot of different policy decisions made by the legislature and the governor. And recently, households have have seen a jump in their utility bills anywhere from $200 to $300 a month. But this time, the rate increases weren't due to the legislature or the governor, but due to the Public Utilities Commission, which is made up of a three-person board. Now, with the cost of everything else going uh, going up and how many uh, people can actually afford a jump in their utility bills like that. Americans for Prosperity Colorado decided to do something about it. They launched digital ads, radio ads, and even went door to door to draw attention to what the Public Utility Commission was doing. And on today's episode, we have Jesse Mallory, who is the state director of Americans for Prosperity Colorado, and he's going to talk about these rate increases and what's happened since AFP has brought attention to this issue. Jesse, thanks for being with us. Hey, thanks for having me. So uh, you're headed, uh, you, you, you're, you're doing this uh, interview, you're headed to uh, somewhere, right? In an air, you're in yeah. an airport right now. Yeah, yeah I'm in Denver <laughs> National Airport right now. All right, sounds good. Listen, You know, we've seen some of the things that have happened in Colorado over the last many years and some crazy things that have increased the cost of utilities around the country, mandates and things like that. But but take a minute and tell folks what some of those bad policy decisions uh, were that were made by government, by the governor and by the legislature of Colorado that has driven up the cost of utilities in Colorado. Absolutely. And this is a fairly complex issue because over the last decade or so, the legislature has been passing, you know, lots of mandates onto the utilities. And what they'll do is, is that they'll pass a bill requiring that utility companies take certain actions, follow certain guidelines that, and they always say, well, it's just a little bit of an increase. It's just, it's just a little bit on the margins. Well, they've been doing that over the last 10 years, as I said. And then, so what happens is utility companies go out and they, they do what, what the legislature tells them to do. And then they go to the PUC and they'll say, Hey, look, we, we just did what the legislature told us to do. Now we need to recover this cost. And, and this, so this is why energy bills in Colorado have steadily gone up just year after year, after year, after year. And this year just, it kind of came to a head with where people were paying. Uh, I know one month for me, it was over $300 and nothing had changed. No matter of my house is still the same temperature it was still the same weather, and I, and I saw a tweet from uh, Excel Energy that said, you know, uh, temperatures are going down. So you turn down your thermostat to save yourself some money. So we're, we're going to tell, you know, people with uh, health conditions, the elderly, vulnerable populations, just be cold. Just be cold. Like, that's, that's, that's their choice. That's their sure. advice to you. And so that, that's when we decided enough was enough, and we needed to take action. Well, and, you know, what, so some of these policies, like uh, like green energy mandates, for instance, like they just magically pass a law that says we want 10% of the energy that Colorado uses, we want that to come from wind turbines or, or renewable energy sources, that there is a cost to doing that. And what you're saying is that that cost uh, the the utility company ends up going to the public utility commission and saying, "Gee, it's more expensive for us to do business here, so we still have to make some money. So we need to pass this on to the consumer." Ultimately, this isn't the evil energy company in the mind of the government that's paying for this. It's the actual consumer or the ratepayer, isn't that right? 
Yeah, and it, it's it's funny to me because the legislature was quick to say, you know, we need to know what Excel is doing. Well, <clears throat> Excel was doing largely what you told them to do. And as people forget, public utility companies like Excel, Black Hills, and others are, uh, you, you know, th- that they operate in in a monopoly, which means they don't have competition, or if they do, it's very minimal. So the government needs to be involved to set rates in order to keep prices low and keep energy affordable. But <clears throat> folks in the legislature will get together and say, well, gosh, we, we want to see our energy uh, sources come from wind, solar, you know, wherever, versus the most reliable and affordable. So they start putting in these arbitrary numbers of 10%, 20%. You know, we want to be carbon free by 2050 and all, and all these things, which sound nice, but it all comes at an extremely high cost, especially the vulnerable population. So what we saw was after years and years of the legislature coming in and setting up these requirements, and then on top of it saying, now we want Excel to go out and build EV chargers and and things like that, that all again, which just start adding costs. And, all, and their argument always is just a little bit here, it's just a little bit there. But as we see, just like in Washington, what they're spending is that over time, that becomes real money and it comes at a real cost to folks. And then next thing you know, we were, uh, we we're going to doors and we have people who come to us and say, you know, I'm trying to decide whether I need, I can buy my groceries for the week or if I can pay this uh, heating bill. And those are not choices and trade-offs we want people making. Well, and we've got to, we've got to connect people to, to these bad decisions, right? Th- these decisions that legislators have made are forcing utility companies. I mean, they're not just doing it to make more money. That's what I think some politicians would like people to think that it's the utility companies, the, the one that's raising the rate. Well, they're raising the rate because they have to, because they're a, a, a company out there to try and make money. And government is actually passing these new mandates and these new uh, laws that create problems for utility companies who then have to pass that on to the consumer. So ultimately, while you can blame the utility company, you can blame the Public Utilities Commission, ultimately it's the laws that the elected representatives of any given state, but in this case, the state of Colorado, it's, it's the laws that those elected officials are passing that's really impacting this and having this negative impact. Yeah. And in Excel, you know, they're, they're not completely blameless in this. They're, they're pursuing, pursuing some of these seen green energy policies that sure. are driving up rates, but it, it, that I, w- I would say the vast majority of this falls in the hands of the legislature. Who's been pushing folks to do this and saying, we want to be um, carbon neutral. We want to be all these things without really looking at the cost it's going to have to the people of Colorado. So after uh, AFP, when we launched this, our radio campaign, our digital campaign, within, I don't know, a week, I think, the PUC announced that they're like, we're going to have a listening session. Well, their listening session, if you saw the news reports, was them rolling their eyes and making snide little comments to each other. Uh, it, was, it wasn't really listening. You know, they were doing it, what I would argue, for show. And then they graciously, yeah. then they graciously announced, oh, we had this surprise uh, energy decrease that we just so happened to come up with, you know, and that's, that's weird that they, you know, waited so long to tell everybody if they really had this as a plan, but that's, <laughs> I guess that's for another day. But I think at, at the end of the day, we need to hold these folks accountable, be it the PUC, because they'll come back and say, well, gosh, it could have been more expensive. So, and our thing is saying, no, it's enough, vote no. So they actually, after enough public outcry, and uh, I'm, and we even had blankets made that we gave out to people that said no more rate increases, and uh, I, I mailed it to the PUC. I, I didn't get a thank you note, but, um, you know, I, I did have some problems with mail in the office. So who knows? Maybe, maybe it just got lost in the mail. But um, <laughs> the, uh, the point is, is that, you know, once, especially these government appointees, when they start feeling the pressure they're not used to, they'll usually bend to the will of the people. Because, I mean, we, we saw it with uh, the Air Quality Control Commission last summer when they tried to do the employee trip reduction plan to have government pressure businesses to pressure their employees to carpool and not drive and give up parking spots and all this other stuff. And when there was public outcry directed at them, they, they, they folded very fast because they're just not used to it. And that's why I would encourage folks that, uh, you know, think they just think, well, I'm going to talk to my elected officials. It's like, no, you find out who those government appointees are like the public utilities commission and you make your voice heard to them because they're not used to hearing that they're used to hearing from a small group of special interest organizations that drive an agenda. But when they hear from real people with real stories, that'll open their eyes. 
This is more and more, I think, how many of the elected officials are passing this, passing the buck to the bureaucracies or to unelected boards and commissions and things to do the dirty work, right? It's easy to pass a law that says we want zero emission, you know, vehicles or we want zero emission or lower emissions or whatever. It's easy to pass a law that says that, but that has to be implemented by someone. And ultimately, uh, you know, the, the utility companies have to come in and implement this, but they're overseen by the regulators. And, you know, th- this is a, a growing problem is, and you talked about it, but it, they're unelected folks appointed to these commissions, these utilities commissions or, or other boards and commissions that are doing this. That's not the way our founding fathers intended it to happen. They wanted us to have an elected official that we could go talk to if we had a, a grievance that we wanted to redress. No, and that's, that's exactly it. And in fact, I, I was just reading a story on Friday that, uh, Jeff, I, I know it's been a while since we last talked about it, but last session, the legislature tried to actually ban gas-powered lawnmowers. And and we we made a bunch of noise about it, brought goats to the Capitol to I love the goats. Yeah. You got to tell folks about the goats to the Capitol. Sure, you got to sure. talk about that one. So, uh, <laughs> so last se- legislative session, a, a group of legislators got together and they said, "You know what? With you know crimes going up in Colorado, education is suffering, our, our roads are crumbling." And they decided, <laughs> "You know what's really bad? Gas-powered lawnmowers." So they they, put, they <laughs> created this bill to to outlaw, to to ban the sale, and then you know, ultimately choke them out and say you, they, they can't exist here because you can't get parts for them. You can't replace things. It was this whole ordeal. And, and it's just, it was absolutely absurd. So, so we started making noise about it and we started saying, well, what are the alternatives? So we, we thought, you know, it'd be funny. We're just have to have everybody, you're gonna have to buy goats. You're gonna have to keep goats at your house. They're just gonna have to keep your grass down, I guess. I don't know. So we brought baby goats <laughs> outside the Capitol and did a little video and posted it. And, I can tell you, legislators are used to hate mail. They're used to negative ads. They're used to all these things. But when people are laughing at them, it hits different. And people were, they, they, they had several caucus meetings about the bill. And they said, we can't pass this thing. We got to kill it. We got to kill it. So in a House supermajority, <laughs> that thing went down in flames and they got rid of it. Uh, bill sponsors still mad at me over it. But here's the thing. Is that I, I just read a report that said the, the Air Quality Control Commission says they're going to pick it up and run with it now. So... Once again, we're going to have to go out and make our voices heard to these unelected bureaucrats who are all government appointees who think they can just pass this while talking to a small group of special interest organizations. And we got to make sure that they're hearing vo- the voices of the people of Colorado who are going to suffer from this policy. And, and didn't, didn't you call that the goat full employment oh, act the, or something uh, it was a, to that effect? It was, a, it was the uh, goat. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was the goat employment act. And uh, so I, I think we're going to, I think we're going to have to resurrect it. I'm going to have to call Kelly and, Ask her to bring out the goats again. Uh, I had a good friend, Kelly Maher, who, uh, yeah. who I borrowed her baby goats <laughs> for that afternoon. There so. you go. That's yeah. great. That's a great story. Um, and good work on that, by the way. So what this this Public Utilities Commission, you started to put pressure on them. And, you know, how did uh, how did they react to this when you started to put pressure on them? What I thought was interesting is, you know, as, as I've mentioned on Previously, is that I worked in the Capitol for seven years, so you know I I know the Public Utilities Commission exists, but most people who are who are outside the energy industry probably don't even know who they are. And I think I saw a quote from somebody I can't remember who it was from, but they call them the most powerful one of the most powerful government organizations that you don't know exists. And I think that's a great way to capture them because there there are three appointees by the governor. The governor appoints them. The state senate has an, you know has hearings and approves them. But these individuals have huge authority on energy rates and a list of other issues that that they'll decide if your rates go up or if they go down or if they stay flat. And for too long, they were just rubber stamping and rubber stamping and rubber stamping. And I was kind of sitting there watching it. And over time, I was talking to some folks who were like, hey, we need to do something about the PUC. I just learned about them. And we started talking more and more. And finally, we decided after the rates went up and people's bills were through the roof. And, and of course, you know, the markets do, do have an impact and among other things, but uh, the PUC and the list as people's rates were astronomically high that they didn't, that people were barely affording it. They were debating another, another rate increase. And we said enough's enough. So that's when we, we started out with some digital ads 
and we did a radio ad that I really enjoy. It's a little boy. He says, Mom, why is it so cold in the house? And she says, well, son, you know, the Public Utilities Commission approved another rate increase, and now I can't afford the bill. And, and that, I mean, those were real stories of people that we were talking to. And uh, we, people would come to the door as we were doing our blankets, and, and they would show us the bills and say, hey, you know, look at, look at my bill. This is a $200, $300 more than what I was paying last year. I can't afford this. And we took those stories, and then we pushed them up to the PUC. There was a, we created a, an eyeball form where people could email them directly. And within just a couple of days, we had several hundred immediately send the PUC an email. And next thing you know, within a, it was a little, I think it was about a little over a week, the PUC freaked out and said, we're getting a ton of public pressure. And they went from saying, we're going to approve this rate increase <laughs> to not only we're not going to approve a rate increase, we're going to give you a rate increase because they're that kind. Um, but it's one of those things that people don't, un- I know it's hard to think, that one voice matters, but it really can. When when that one voice and it's another just one voice, and then when everybody steps up and shares their real story of impact, that I mean that that can profoundly transform somebody's decision. And we saw a perfect example of it. Right. Well, and that's that's uh, that is a great example. We have to tell those stories, the impact that it has on people. Uh, you know, if we can't tell those stories, then we're not going to be able uh, to change. Uh, you you went door to door and and you, you employed a lot of different tactics, which I I think were great. Um, ultimately, this they they backed they backed off on some of this, but the the bigger issue here is obviously trying to make sure that the legislators in the state don't continue to pass these kind of bad laws that are going to cause rate increases to to, to happen for the people of Colorado, right? Yeah. So never fear. They held an energy select committee on energy or it was a select committee on energy rates where they were going to get to the bottom of this. And ironically, they, they pointed out problems with utilities. They pointed out issues with the POC, uh, but they did forget a major player in that equation. And I'm sure you can guess who that probably was. That was them. <laughs> and, <laughs> right. But thankfully, we have a champion like Senator Barbara Kirkbyer on the committee who started listing all the legislation that had been passed. That was mandate after mandate after mandate after mandate. And, and she lists, and, and we did an interview with her as well that we posted where she lists several bills that had a direct impact on this. She, she talked about Senate Bill 181 that went after the oil and gas industry in Colorado that so many of them supported and put in the law. She's, so she pointed out, uh, masterfully, in my opinion, that she's like, you can't sit there and say, you know, we don't understand why energy costs are so high after you supported all these bills when all of us told you this was going to happen. So it, it's been a huge accountability tool because what we found with folks is that normally people would be like, well, you know, my energy bills doesn't really bother me. I, most folks didn't really, it wasn't really on the radar. Rates were actually in Colorado used to be very affordable, but they're not anymore. And now people went from saying, hey, I want to actually know how you voted. I want to know what your beliefs are on these policies because people have had enough. Yeah, and it's it's that simple. We've got to connect them to the fact that this isn't just some evil company out there that's doing it. It's being caused by their elected officials. And and people need to understand that so that they can get different elected officials (laughs) if if they don't like the utility rates that they're paying. There's a reason for that. I mean, there are other alternatives. We're trying to create this false choice in the economy that somehow they have to, you know, energy rates are just going up. Well, they, they, they are to some degree, but they don't have to go up as, as dramatically as they are. That's being driven by bad policies that our elected officials are driving. Well, and and obviously, you know, markets play a role and, uh, and other things have an impact, but the, the, the consistent variable in all this has been mandate after mandate that has steadily kept pushing those rates higher and higher and higher and higher. And then when you have a situation where, uh, you know, natural gas costs are higher, something like that, the, the, the impact is just so profound that somebody, they, they feel it instantly. And what I, what I thought was interesting is it was AFP and AARP who are the biggest opponents of, of this and have been. And this is where one of those, you know, some folks are considered an unlikely alliance where we come together from both sides and, and we hold these folks accountable because ARP even pointed out, here's the impact you as a legislature have had, and they listed it all out. And then Excel starts coming out saying, don't be mad at us, be mad at them. Look at all the bills they passed. And we, we posted a, uh, it's, what, it's that Spider-Man meme or there, you know, there's three Spider-Men pointing at each other. 
and we had the legislature, the Excel Energy and PUC talking about how they were all like, <laughs> they all went from like turning on each other and saying, well, here's what they did. Here's what they're doing. Here's what they made us do. The next thing you know, because uh, people were actually calling Excel and complaining and Excel would say, you need to call your legislature. They made us do this. And it's been great. It's exactly it. And, and that's what we need more of. We need, I mean, as everyone knows, the best disinfectant is a little bit of sunlight. And when people know what happened and that, and those closed door meetings are suddenly open and people know who made what decision, that's how we put a stop to this sort of policy. Yeah. And that's when the citizens actually turn the web and, uh, and aim it at the, the other spider men yeah, that's that, right. that, that, right. that are there. So that's great. That's great. Jesse, thanks for, thanks for joining us. If uh, folks want to know any more about this effort or get in contact uh, with you, what, what can they do? Well, I think if you want to learn about the effort, I would go to no more rate increases.com. That's no more rate increases.com. And you'll see a lot of the, um, a lot of the work that we've done. And uh, also we have a hashtag, just hashtag no more rate increases. You'll see the, the, the artwork and different things that we did, the, the door to door handouts, um, but as far as for, um, as us, I think the best way to contact us is to go to americansforprosperity.org, hit that contact form and reach out to us. And somebody from our team always responds to everybody who reaches out and get connected. And if nothing else, just know what's going on. My, I understand people are busy and they have a lot going on in their lives. And w- what we want to be is that trusted partner that can let them know what's happening and more importantly, what they can do about it. Uh, every, everybody knows it's wrong in the world. Not everybody can actually give somebody an action they can take to help try to make it better. So, and that's something that I really pride that we as an organization do. So again, that's Americans for prosperity.org uh, connect with us there. And uh, yeah, let's, let's make change. All right, Jesse. Hey, thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for joining me. Thanks today. for having me, Jeff. You bet. Um, look, you're listening to this and you're thinking, well, but I don't live in Colorado. How does this affect me? There's no reason you can't be doing this in your state as well. You can do the same thing. Uh, I guarantee you, if you have a legislature that is into green energy mandates and those kinds of things, they're passing those kinds of laws. These utilities commissions are passing that cost on to you. And this is how you fight back. So I would encourage you to uh, to contact uh, Jesse, as he just said, or you can send me an email at jeff at AmericanPotential.com and I'll get you in touch with Jesse and get you more information about uh, how they're fighting back in Colorado and ways that you can do this in your state as well. So I hope that uh, you will consider doing that. Hey, thanks for following us and for, for listening to the podcast. Appreciate you uh, doing that. Please leave us a review. If you're listening on any of the podcast formats that are out there, the platforms, uh, feel free to, to leave a review. We'd love to have you do that. Also follow us on YouTube. Uh, Facebook, and uh, lots of, uh, you can follow us on Twitter as well. Lots of places to connect with the show. Again, it's only because of you and the great work that you do as citizens of this great country that America truly has potential. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for listening to American Potential. You may listen to more stories from Americans working every day to expand freedom and opportunity in their communities by visiting AmericanPotential.com.